Today I've been trying instruments, I've been trying the latest models of alto and tenor saxophones, but it brings me back, or it made me think about nearly 40 years ago, when I'd been playing the saxophone a few years, I'd done the usual thing, you start with a sort of student model instrument, uh, but then you graduate to a Selma. So I think I was 14 or 15 years old, and I had my first Selma saxophone, and it was amazing. And I thought to myself, well, why have I stuck with Selma for nearly 40 years? And ultimately, for me, it's very, very clear. It's very, very easy. It's about the sound. It's about the tone. It's about the sound. There's something about the sound of a Selma for me um, that is, gives you a real depth, a richness, a quality. Also, there's something very malleable about it. It's not just one sound. You know, you can do something with the sound, you can change the sound, it's flexible. Also, I've noticed um, if you really put a large amount of air through it at times, it responds. There are some other saxophones that I tried when I was a kid where you, you put the air through, it reaches a sort of almost like a ceiling uh, and it won't respond anymore. Uh, that's not the case with Selma, it totally responds. My job as a saxophonist in the UK is, the way we were brought up in the UK is that we need to be versatile, we have to be versatile musically to survive. It's really, really simple. So you leave music college, I have jazz uh, gigs, jazz setup, mouthpieces, uh, classical, playing the Apollo saxophone quartet. A lot of our music is a sort of crossover of styles. I need that flexibility of sound with a saxophone and I can put a different mouthpiece on and just be secure in the knowledge that I have a fantastic instrument in my hands that I can play. All my excuses are gone. It's up to me then to do the practice, to do the listening, to do the homework and to do the gigs and survive and develop as a musician. So this is the, very much the key uh, for me, having an instrument that's flexible, versatile and has a deep, rich sound. I think if you have a saxophone that has a naturally very bright sound and you're constantly trying to darken it, for me that's not the right way around. I want something that's dark and rich. If I want to brighten it, I can. It seems like a good sort of combination of events for me. So, as I said, great privilege to be working with Selma and then to be here today and to be collaborating with Selma Paris for the last 15, 20 years.